All right. So, uh, all right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. This is the second week of race planning with Strides. Uh, watch that one month. Uh, quick recap on last week. We had Angus and Kun from the Stride team uh, go over some of the you know general race planning rules and guidelines for for road running. So, 5K to marathon. And we also talked about you know some of the watch setups you can do to view your power real time. Um, so, so this week we have a special guest on. We have Chris, Coach Chris Haig here. Uh, Chris has been coaching with Stride for quite a while now, and wow. he's actually produced a lot of videos, great videos on everything about Stride, from using Stride's Power Center to WKO4 to analyze data. So, um, so Chris is pretty experienced, and he's he uh, was gracious enough to join us and talk about you know triathlon race planning since. Um, there's a large group of triathletes using Stride, so there's a lot more variables at play. So Chris is going to go into details on that, and um, we'll we'll talk about half Ironman, Ironman um, race planning. So uh, with that, uh, thank you, Chris, for joining us, and I'll hand over to you. Um, one one special note is that you know at the end we'll we'll take questions. Um, so if you want to comment throughout the the webinar, there's a chat box, um, so you can so you can leave comments, and we'll we'll try to answer questions. Um, towards the end of the webinar. All right, here you go, Chris. Awesome, thank you, Matt. Um, hopefully, we'll get my screen up shortly, um, and we'll start. Okay, let's see here. Start sharing my screen. All right, hi everyone. Um, I'm Chris, and let's get into the webinar. So I'm going to start screen sharing now, and so you should. Perfect. All right, uh, so this webinar is all about pacing the perfect triathlon for you um, using Stride and a couple other features. Um, I use personally use WKO, but throughout the, uh, throughout the webinar, I will give you strategies for uh, using Stride's power center and other ways so that you can plan out your perfect half and full distance Ironman. Uh, and then we're gonna take questions at the end. If you have more questions about duathlon, Sprint and Olympic. This, uh, there are considerations you need to consider for those distances. So I'm going to focus pr primarily on the half and full distance because that's where a lot of our, our members on Facebook uh, wanted information on. If you have specific questions on those, though, put them in the side and we'll try to get to them at the end. But the purpose of this webinar is to specifically focus on half and full distance Ironman triathlons. So the goals of this webinar, first is to step, uh, I'm going to give you concrete steps to figure out your ideal run power for a half and full distance Ironman. Uh, I'm going to give you a brick workout test so that you can calculate your own numbers. I'm going to provide you with a little list of considerations that you need to look into when designing a run, uh, a goal run plan. And then overall, I want you to come away with the ability to use your bike and run data to inform you about how to pace the run regardless of your ability. Uh, I do want to list a few caveats here. Uh, this is a developing science, so more data is definitely needed. Um, we are just getting into uh, more and more people using stride on not only in open races, but in triathlon. Uh, so not a lot of, unlike cycling where you have data going back all the way to the eighties for power numbers and nineties for power number, we're just starting to collect data here. So coaches like me and Jim Vance, we're still trying to figure out the exact model based off what our athletes and other athletes are using. Uh, so it's not completely exact. There's a little bit of art to it, um, but it is developing. So keep that in mind. And th this is a model and uh, models are great, but there's always exceptions to a model. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. And your mileage will vary. So depending on what type of runner you are, depending on what type of cyclist you are, depending on the conditions and your nutrition strategy, it, you're going to have to tweak this plan a little bit to customize it to you. And that's, that's true for training in general. Uh, and this leads in my last point. You also need to experiment on yourself. Do not say I have a race this weekend and I'm going to use this formula. You got to experiment with it. Uh, you got to tweak it, you got to revise it, and I'm going to give you strategies today on how exactly to do that. So we know that it, running a, a half marathon 
after doing a 56 mile bike and after a 1.2 mile swim or a 2.4 mile swim and 112 mile bike is completely different than doing an open half marathon or open marathon. So you have to consider a lot more than you would in an open running race and running at a power or pace that you feel you should be able to run is not a good strategy. That's why we use stride. That's why we use power numbers. That's why we use a power on your bike because what you quote unquote should be able to do can differ drastically from what you're actually able to do and which is actually prudent, which is why using a concrete objective measure such as a power meter both on the bike and the run is so helpful is because you're actually able to train yourself and train where you are as an athlete and race where you are as an athlete and not necessarily where you think you should be. So considerations that you need when you're looking at an Ironman and a half Ironman running race. How strong a biker are you? Do, do you come from a cycling background? Um, that's very critical because if you have a very strong cycling background and you are a strong cyclist, your legs are going to be less fatigued after those 56 or 112 miles than they would be if you are a very weak cyclist. So you need to consider how, how much the bike takes out of you. You also need to consider what is your TSS and intensity factor for the bike on your race. So TSS is training stress score, IF is intensity factor, and these are calculated based off your functional threshold power and tell you how much stress you put your body under relative to your functional threshold power during a workout or race. So uh, we'll dive into these numbers later on, but you need to consider these when planning out not only your bike plan, but also your run plan. And finally, how strong a runner are you? Do you have a running experience? Because if you are a strong runner, you're able to psychologically push through fatigue legs, get your running form under you versus a not so strong runner who comes off the bike with fatigue legs, you're not going to be able to get your running legs under you, possibly for the whole entire run. So you need to consider what is your running experience and things that kind of factor into, into what you need to consider is heat. Um, this is less to do with power numbers uh, and more how your ability to express your power numbers during a race. If it is hot and you don't hydrate properly and you come on to the run dehydrated, and I'm sure Nick at Stride, who did Ironman Boulder last week, can attest to this, you need to consider heat as not necessarily as far as your power numbers, but as far as nutrition and fueling and making sure that you're hydrating correctly throughout the bike and throughout the run so that you're able to express your power numbers that you're able, that you should be able to do. Hills kind of, I put a kind of here because yes, you do need to consider hills and I will touch on this later on in the webinar, but if you have a hilly course like Ironman St. George, you need to factor that not necessarily into what your target power should be, but how you approach running those hills. And of course, a big one is wind, both on the bike and the run. If it's a very windy course, then it will take more out of you on the bike. Uh, if you try to push it, then if it's a not so windy course, and then also your power numbers on the run because running power meters cannot include wind into their algorithm. So you need to tweak that slightly if it's a windy day or you're running into a headwind. All right, with all of those considerations and with all of those caveats, let's actually dig into how you can set up your race strategy. So first things first, let's look at the bike. So this is my beautiful steed. Um, I'm just showing you pictures, A, because I'm a proud, proud bike owner, and also I want to show you my setup for context. So this is a Lightspeed Blade um, carbon fiber. Uh, this is my race setup. I'm showing you my race setup, just kind of give you an idea, because this factors into aerodynamics as well as other things on the bike, which I'm going to show you in the next slide. Um, but you can see, you know, Lightspeed Blade. I've got the Tri-Rig setup, and then, of course, we talked about hydration, um, and uh, that's my current hydration setup. So I've got two on the back, one on the front, and then also I've got a P1 PowerTap pedal, um, and that's where I'm getting my cycling data from. Uh, my cycling power numbers from. So that's my my current setup. Um, I love it, um, and it it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great bike. Highly recommend it. Um, all right. So step one: goal normalized power, TSS, and intensity factor. So just like I said before, we don't start with the run. We have to start with the bike. So what I've done is I use Best Bike Split, and you can go over to Best Bike Split, and you can set up a Best Bike Split account uh, for free. Um, it integrates with Training Peaks, and you can set up an account, and you can get a goal power 
uh, power profile for your goal race. So what I did is I went in and I, I chose my goal race, which is Barrel Man 2017. Um, that's in Niagara Falls. It's put on by Rev3 and Can uh, Canada Multisports. Uh, and I plugged in all of my data. So I put, plugged in my aerodynamic data. I plugged in my um, race setup. And I plugged in my functional threshold power on the bike. And they spit out this power goal and power plan for me based off that course and based off my current, that's important to consider, my current metrics. So my current FTP, not my goal FTP, and my current weight, not my goal, uh, not my goal weight. And so this is what it looks like. So I, my goal is to get a 216 on the bike. Um, to do that, I'm going to have to have a normalized power on the bike of 264.64 watts. Um, variability index is one. It's a flat course, so that's easily attainable. Intensity factor, this is the IF that I was talking about, 0.88. That means that I'm going to be riding at 88% of my functional threshold power. My training stress score, my TSS, we talked about this before, is 176. And then you can see all the other data there. So the first thing, the reason why we're starting with this is we're going to figure out how much it, the bike is going to take out of you. So if we look at the TSS kind of chart over here on the right side of the page, is this an appropriate TSS and intensity factor for a racer? And if we look over here, 176 is right in between the green and the yellow. So right in the safe zone of proven, uh, proven a strong number, uh, proven a good TSS score for runners, as well as kind of a good range for age group with good uh, good preparation. So if you plug in your numbers and you see that you're, you fall within this green zone, that means you're most likely going to be able to run well off the bike. However, if you plug in your goal times and your goal numbers and you're up here in the red, you might want to reconsider the bike so that you can pace the bike correctly and therefore be able to run off the bike to your abilities. So that's the first step is to sit, uh, figure out what this training stress scores will be for your bike so that A, you don't overcook it, and B, you can test how well you run off the bike based off your bike plan. And with that, let's set some goals for the run. All right, so step two, we figured out our plan for the bike. Let's figure out our plan for the run. So figure out your preliminary goal watts. And I say preliminary is because these are going to change. These are going to change based off what we find after we do our test. And also figure out um, they, they're preliminary because your, your fitness might change, your ability to run might change, your effectiveness is, uh, for running might change. So this is these are all preliminary. But this is why we need to do this so we can create something and test it out. So what I've done is I have a race calendar and we'll put the link to this calculator I'm going to write about to show you uh, in the show notes so that you can access it as well. Um, but what it is, is I modified a calculator from Steve Palladino. And what I've done is I have, I put in my goal time and let's say my goal time for my half Ironman barrel man is a 120. I think that's a reasonable goal based off past racing experiences. And that's what I want to hit based off my plan. So expected race distance is 13.1. I plug that in. Expected RE. Now, RE stands for running effectiveness. Essentially, what it does is it calculate, It uses your weight and calculates how much of your watts are actually going to pushing you forward versus being wasted based off your weight. So it's a good metric of how effective your watts, your the watts that you're putting into your running are being translated into forward speed. So expected RE, you will get this from WKO4. Uh, that's the program that I use. You can use online calculators to figure this out. In general, if you don't have WKO4 and you don't have um, uh, or some way to calculate your RE, I find that beginners usually run 0.99. Um, intermediate is usually 0.1.0 uh, uh, and advanced is 1.01. Now, these might not seem like a lot, but this, you know, a hundredth uh, change is considerable. Uh, higher RE means you're a more effective runner. Uh, I plugged in my weight and I plugged in my FTP or my critical power for the run. This is your run critical power. And it generates this. So my target pace is a 606 mile and my target power is 281. Now 281 is 89.4% of my critical power. For half Ironman races, 
I expect between 85 to 92% of your FTP with 92% being like the athletes like Ben Canute, um, Lionel Sanders, Robert Langa. I'm sure they're doing about 90%, 92% of their, their critical power. I would bet for a half iron man. Uh, I would say more amateur athletes are closer to between 85 and 88. So when you're looking at the percentage of FTP, if this target power, if it falls within this range and kind of meets your ability, then it's a good number to go for. So Ironman, it's more like 80 to 85% FTP. Uh, and we'll get into that during the Ironman section. But right now, let's just focus on half Ironman races. So back to the slide. In general, 85 to 91%, actually I'm gonna change that too. Yeah, 91% is a good realistic place to start. 85 for less experienced runners and cyclists, 90 to 91 for stronger runners and cyclists. And 90, anything like 90 and above, that's an aggressive, you better be an experienced runner and you better have done this a lot of time percentage. Uh, a lot of people sometimes re reference the Regal formula. I find it's less accurate uh, to use this in this situation because the bike and RE changes with fatigue legs. Uh, so this is why I use this calculator. And then also you might be wondering about hills. I talked about hills before. I don't change my power numbers if it's a hilly course. And the reason why I don't is I, instead of changing my goal target power, I just change my running, my running um, strategy in which case I still wanna hit that 281 power, but I wanna to try to get that on the uphills and the downhills. So, but there's also, it's hard, you don't wanna slow down completely on the hills. It's still a race. So I like to do a 10% rule. And if I'm going up a steep hill or a long steep climb, as long as my target power is within 10% of, or my hill power is within 10% of my target power. So in this case, I, I'm looking at like 310 watts going up a hill, I think that's fine. And then on the downhills, it's gonna take a lot to get to 281. So as long as I'm between 260 and 270 on the downhills, that's a good target power for the hills. If I'm on flats, I wanna hit that 281. So it's not that I'm changing my target power, I'm just adapting my running strategy to the course. All right, let's get into testing. So once you've figured out your goal your goal FTP uh, on the bike, your goal TSS on the bike, your strategy for the bike, you figure out your goal run power, your goal run pace. Let's actually test this out to make sure it works. And you should do this, I would say between four and six weeks out from your A race, if not sooner. I like to do it most likely every six weeks because your numbers will change as you become fitter. So test workouts. For a beginner triathlete, this is your first half Ironman, then I would recommend going a test, a good test workout would be three to four times 25 minutes at your goal half Ironman watts with five minute recovery. So go out for a 10, 20 minute warm up, and then go straight into your three to four rounds of 25 minutes at that target power that we hit before with five minutes recovery in between. And then once you've completed that, do a three mile goal run power off the bike. So if this, if I was going to be doing my watts, I would be doing uh, two, uh, um, 264 for my 25 minutes and then trying to hit 280 on those three miles at goal run power off the bike. The reason why it's only three miles and not longer is because the risk of injury when you're doing a brick workout, especially after fatiguing your legs, can be very high. And I actually, all of these workouts have been calculated so that you can get a good TSS score that will mimic what you find in a half Ironman race. So for an intermediate, intermediate triathlete, I would recommend two by 20 minutes at sweet spot intensity, which is 90 to 95% of your FTP in a tough gear. So you really wanna max out your gear, either find a hill, go into a headwind, or just go to your biggest gear up front, your biggest gear in the back, and then, or your smallest gear in the back, so that you really drop your cadence down to 60 to 65 RPM. What this is going to do is this is going to fatigue your legs before your main set, before your half Ironman at goal wattage pace. Fatigue your legs more than riding for longer times. So you're going to get, in a shorter period of time, you're going to get more stress on your legs, which is going to simulate the later stages of a half Ironman bike ride. And then after you've completed two by 20, you want to go into 60 minutes at goal half Ironman watts. And then off the bike, you want to do three miles at goal run power off the bike.
And then for more advanced athletes, three by four, 20 minutes at sweet spot intensity, one and two in tough gears, and then three and four in normal gearing. And then 40 to 60 minutes at hot, Ironman pace with five miles at goal half Ironman pace off the bike. So those are your three test workouts um, that I like to do when testing out my race plan. One thing that you should also be practicing here is race nutrition and race hydration. That way you can test whether running off the bike with the nutrition that you consumed on the bike actually works and whether you consumed enough and whether that, that sugar or that maltodextrin or that you can or that bar that you ate gels well, no pun intended, gels well with the run after the bike. So use this as a good opportunity to practice your race. Um, practice your race from beginning to end, uh, including you know what you eat the morning of, what you eat during the bike, what you drink during the bike, and then also test out your, your hydration setup on the bike as much as you can. Really treat it like a race. All right, so let me give you an example now. So what I did is I actually went out and, like a good coach, I tested my advanced workout plan. I um, mean, I've done this a couple of times, so I just didn't do this for the webinar. Uh, I actually uh, I tested this out, and here's what I found. So here is WK04. Here is my profile. So what I did is let me show you the bike. And... You pull up that workout, half Ironman sim. Here we are. All right, so what I did is I did my advanced workout, workout dashboard, and actually let's go cycling interview review back. So I'm going to, if I were in your shoes, I would do this after each, after you do your test to figure out uh, to, hold on one second, let me get the right chart out. All right, to figure out if you actually hit the numbers that you want. So here you can, it's, it's a little hard to test, uh, see it here, but what I've done is I've highlighted my intervals on the sign. So what I did is I did three by 20, two in tough gears, one in normal gearing, and then I did my, four, uh, my 40 minutes at half Ironman pace. So just looking at the data right here, I can see that that first 20 minutes, I hit my power correctly at my intensity, my goal intensity factor. So I hit that well, my cadence was on point, check the box there. Did I do it on this lap? Yes, I did. Cadence was good, power was good, intensity factor was good. And then for my 40 minutes at half Ironman pace, 88%, which is exactly what Best Bike Split wanted me to do. Uh, average power was 261, which is, ex and normalized power was 263, which is slightly below what, um, Best bike split wanted me to do, but still within the acceptable range. So did I do the bike correctly? I did. And if we look at the overall TSS, I got 193, which is slightly above my race bait, my race goal. But at the same time, this includes warm up and very little cooldown. So TSS is going to be a little bit higher. But so I'm within the acceptable range. The bike went successfully. That shows me and tells me, yes, I can do this on the bike, I can hit those numbers on the bike, and therefore this is a good bike strategy, at least for the bike. Now let's actually look at the run. So once again, I'm gonna go into WKO, and if you've watched my WKO webinar uh, for Stride, you can't set up, one. you can't have one account, you have to have a running account and a triathlon account. So this is my running account uh, for, uh, for WKO, this is my, um, and then uh, this is my running uh, running account just for my run, so I can analyze using power and analyze using my um, form power and everything else uh, and dig into that. So if you're interested in how to set up WKO, that's another, another webinar. Uh, but here is my half Ironman test run. So like I said, this is it was five miles at race pace off the bike. So let's look at it. So. Mile one, if we look up at the side, mile one was a six minute, 544, 544, five, uh, 552. And let's look at these individually. So here you can see my stride power is 285, 291, 291, 290, 282. So you can see that my middle miles were slightly off, that they're a little bit higher than normal. My first mile was actually spot on. And my last mile was, a, was spot on as well. But if you look at my average running effectiveness for each mile, keep this in mind. 
So my first running effect in this was 0.99. Now this is a little bit lower than I expected. I was expecting to do about 1.0. Why is it lower? A couple factors that you have to keep in mind. First off, I'm going mostly off hill, which uh, uphill, which it was a slight incline. It wasn't a huge hill, but that does affect RE. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. You also have to consider that I just got off the bike. So your legs are going to be a little bit slower. And that's confirmed if you look at your leg spring stiffness. Now, if you don't have WKO and you want to use Power Center, you can look at your LSS off the bike. What was it off the bike? If you have a very low number relative to where you are normally, that means you fatigue your legs too much. This right here, though, is right where I typically am when my legs are at a normal fatigue state. So not fresh, but at a normal fatigue state. So while these two numbers are lower to start off getting off the bike, they're understandable. What's more important is what happens to the, you the rest of the run. So you will see in mile two, especially when it flattened out in mile two here, that my running effect in this went back to normal. It went above 1.0, which is good. And my LSS also went up. So what that tells me is that I didn't overcook the bike. I didn't kill my legs because my legs did rebound. I was able to get my running legs underneath me. And that was true for miles three, four, and five, that I was still able to put out the power, still able to have an effective running stride and not fatigue legs. Now, you might be wondering why I have LSS per kilogram here. Uh, the reason for that is because if you want to compare LSS from athlete to athlete, um, you have to use LSS per kilogram because it's, it's highly individual. Uh, so if you want to figure out if that LSS is good, um, I've developed this chart right here, and you can see that my LSS per kilogram is just below average, which I would expect for a run like this. My RE right here, right on average, it's right underneath the good of 1.01, .01, so running off the bike. I'm pleased with that. And then also my horizontal power on the right side of the screen, that is above average. So all of these metrics are telling me several things. A, my race strategy is good. I'm able to run those distances with effective running stride and without fatigue legs. And also I didn't overcook the bike. One last thing, let's take a look at the fatigue. Is this sustainable? That's another thing you wanna ask yourself. And if we look at my entire workout here, you can see that my running effectiveness did not change. You can see that my LSS did not change. And all my other metrics pretty much stayed relative between the beginning and end of my workout. If we break it up into quarters, we can see that my LSS actually improved over the course of the run, which is good. Power quartiles, same thing, that my wattage did not dip drastically over the course of the run. So all of those are good indicators that I have a good running plan and bike plan. So with that, let me get back to my, okay. So analyzing modified, things to look for. A, the bike, did you hit your uh, numbers and how did it feel? Yes, it did, and it felt good. LS LSS, how fatigued are your legs coming off the bike? That's something that you need to answer, um, looking at your LSS score. How effective are you coming off the bike? Now, let's say that your running effectiveness wasn't so hot. Let's say it was 0.98 or 0.99. What you can do now is you can go back to my calculator and you can plug in, oh, hold on. Uh, you can plug in here 0.99 instead of 1.0 because now you know what your running effectiveness at those wattages is coming off the bike. You also need to look at form power percentage. So how much of your form is being wasted? This is related to RE. So this is another thing you can use instead of using RE. And then also most importantly, RPE off the bike. If you are dying, even though you're hitting your power numbers, if you are dying on this run, you need to change your plan. Overall, if you are not, if you feel like you're not able to hit these numbers, you need to change your plan. You need to core, you need to tune, fine tune your body so that you're able to feel the watts that you're pushing out. Instead of training by the numbers, you have to let the numbers inform you and tell you, am I overcooking it? Can I do this for 13.1 miles? So RPE is critical. You need to be in tune with your body. Don't rely solely on the numbers. Just because you can do it on paper, or at least WKO says you can do it, doesn't necessarily mean that you can in a race. So you need to modify it. 
All right, with that, that finishes my half Iron Man section. Let's get into Iron Man because Iron Man's a whole different beast. The steps for calculating your run power and your bite power are gonna be the same, but you, there are a lot more things you need to consider. So just like uh, when we're talking, just like when we were doing, uh, looking at doing our steps for the half Iron Man, we're gonna follow those same steps for Iron Man. So step one, goal normalized power, TSS, and intensity factors. So what I did is I, you know, I'm not registered for Kona, I hope to qualify one day, but I, you know, went on to best bike split once again, plugged in and saw saw if I were to do Ironman World Championships this year, what would I be looking at and what would I need to consider? So average power, just kind of in a goal race plan, if I train consistently for a year and a half until next October, what could I possibly do? Um, fun little thought experiment. Uh, and if you're bored at work, that's a great thing to do is waste time on WK or um, Best Bike Split to figure out this and kind of do dream races, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, so my goal plan for Ironman Kona would be average power of 223, uh, very um, intensity factor of 0.75 and 276. So is this a good TSS and a good intensity factor? Well, let's look at the chart. So here we're in the gray zone right now, and that's a safe, that's a good range for most age groupers with good preparation. So I am in a good spot with that intensity factor and, uh, and with that TSS score. So we can check the box there. Now let's go back to our calculator. Let's say I wanted to run three hours off the bike. Assuming that I hydrate correctly, assuming that the conditions are correct, and assuming I train properly, I would like to do a three-hour marathon at Kona. Yeah, that's tough. It's Kona. But this is, once again, goal times um, that we're experimenting with here. So three hours, 26.2. Running effectiveness, once again, 1.0 weight and functional threshold power, both the same, and it gives me 250, and that's just under 80%. For Ironman, I find 80 to 85% is a good realistic goal for you to shoot for. With that, let's test it out. So we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did with the half Ironman, but with slightly different test workouts, um, because you're training more for Ironman than you are for half Ironman. So all of these workouts, once again, are programmed to hit good TSS numbers that simulate an Ironman and what you're gonna expect on race day. So for a beginner triathlete, that's three rounds of 20 minutes at 90 to 95% of FTP in a tough gear, and then 55 minutes at goal IM Watts with five minutes recovery, do that two, uh, three rounds through, and then off the bike, do two to three times by two miles at goal run power off the bike with a one minute aid station in between. So. Figure out a two mile course, put a water bottle down, put a cooler down and do two mile laps at your goal race base. Take a one minute walk break and to simulate the aid station and do that two to three times. Intermediate, four to five rounds of 15 minutes at 90 to 95% FTP in a tough gear. Once again, this is gonna simulate, uh, get you, fatigue your legs um, before you hit your iron, iron man watts. And then you're gonna do 40 minutes at your goal iron watts with five minutes recovery. Um, and once again, five to six miles goal run power off the bike with a one minute aid station. And then if for advanced tr triathletes, four to five rounds of 20 minutes at 90 to 95% FTP in a tough gear, 40 minutes at goal I am Watts with five to seven miles at goal I am pace off the bike. Don't have an example for you, but I would go through the same steps that I did before in the half Ironman and just apply it to the Ironman. So the things you need to look at. Did you hit your numbers and how did it feel? And did your nutrition and hydration plan work? Obviously for like a race like Kona, you need to factor this in. Once again, you're gonna look at LSS. How fatigued are your legs coming off the bike? Because you put in a similar TSS on those bike workouts that I just gave you, how, does your, how do your legs respond when you're off the bike? Once again, you need to check your RE, how effective are you coming off the bike? And if you're not effective, if you're not an effective runner, if you find that you're actually 0.98 instead of 1.01, .01, then you need to change your target powers. And if you don't have RE, form power percentage is another one. And then also RPE off the bike, could you do more? You should be able to finish these workouts saying, yeah, I could most likely do 20 miles more of this. So those are all things you need to consider uh, when evaluating and modifying your plan. And you want to do this a couple times throughout your training cycle so that A, you get the experience and you get a good training day in, but you're also able to modify, uh, modify your training and adapt your race plan to your, fitness plan, uh, to your fitness levels as they adapt. 
So overall, I know I've talked way too long, um, but just to give you a brief summary, first look and plan the bike with TSS intensity factor, Pro, uh, set out your preliminary run goals, test, refine after analysis, and then practice, practice, and practice. So with that, I think we're gonna open it up to questions. Oh, and there we are. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Um, so yeah, if you, people have questions, feel free to comment in the chat box below. And then, um, like Chris mentioned, we're also going to add some uh, show notes to the YouTube video uh, as soon as the recording's ended. We'll include the Google Doc that he was talking about and um, information. You know, Chris has also done a WKO4 introduction webinar, so we'll link to that and also Chris's um, coaching page for his, his contact information in case you have questions or follow up. Um, you know, we can reach out to us. Great. All right. Um, let, me, let me see if I can. All right, so question from Nick. Uh, what's your best advice for the situation I was in at Ironman Boulder? I had a nutrition bonk on the bike and still wanted to run pretty fast. All right, my nutrition for, uh, my strategy for that would be you gotta modify your plan kind of as you go. Um, if you bonked on the bike but still wanted to run pretty fast, I would take the first section of your run conservative, get your running legs under you, refuel as much as you can, rehydrate as much as you can, and then build back into that strong in, into a fast run um so you have to modify and tweak your numbers slightly to adapt to your situation um but that's what i would do nick um I, you still you negative split the iron man bowl uh the iron man boulder course which is amazing um so whatever you did worked well uh, if i was in that situation i most likely would have done what you did kind of ease back on that first section um take the walk breaks as i needed to and then once i get settled down my stomach settles down attack the run all right, one here from, all right, thanks, Chris. How do you factor in the reduction in bike power following a tough swim and the impact that may have on the run? Awesome question, because we also do have to consider the swim. Um, I would actually say, as far as a reduction in bike power when it comes off, uh, out of a uh, reduction in bike power when you're coming out of the water, I think setting, making sure that you're not overdoing that intensity factor. And that's why we set the intensity factor right around 85% for half Ironman. That, I, that factors in the swim and the energy it takes to that, the, um, the energy that it takes coming out of the water. Um, so if you are a poor swimmer, that means, and it takes a lot more energy out of you to complete the swim. What you want to do is you want to lower your intensity factor on the bike. Um, and by lowering the intensity factor on the bike, you're going to be conserving more energy for the run that follows. So if you expend more energy on the swim, then uh, lower the intensity factor on the bike because you're not going to have as much energy. Uh, also, if you wanted to, you could test out that on in a test workout do a swim before you hop on the bike uh so hop in the pool do like a thousand meter tt and then get out of the pool get your tt suit on and then hop on the bike so you can do that i've actually done this workout with uh, the the one that i prescribed by doing the vasa beforehand the vasa swim ergometer that works great for kind of a, a test run of the swim and how much the swim took out of me um, but those are also some things you can use to adapt adapt the bike and then adapt the run so i hope that answers answers your question um for a marathon transitioning to triathlon and planning a 70.3 late this year does it look managed to target the same pace in 70.3 than marathon All right so for a marathon or transition triathlon and planning a 70.3 late this year does it 
uh, does it sound manageable to target the same pace in a 70.3? I would say that, or, um, running addict, excellent question. I would say yes. Uh, I, I think you would obviously have to test that out uh, in your practice, but I think that would be a reasonable goal for something later on this year, especially with some, uh, with focusing on the bike. I know a lot of runners who are coming to – uh, triathlon definitely need to focus more on the bike and the swim than they do their run. And therefore I think it's a reasonable goal, but you really got to improve your bike and improve your swim so that you're actually able to run off the bike period, regardless of pace. Uh, does it make sense to plan an Olympic distance race like that? Yes. Um, I think planning an Olympic distance race like this will work. It's just the intensity factor goes up. Uh, for especially for the bike, uh, you want to really fatigue your legs more and see what your running effectiveness is off the bike. You're more likely to run r closer to critical power in an Olympic triathlon uh, than you would a half Ironman race. Uh, so you're looking at more like 95%, I would say, um, in an Olympic triathlon for the 10K than you are, uh, and I think that would be 95% of your FTP or your stride critical power would be a good goal to set for an Olympic race. Which intensity uh, would you use in best bike split for an Olympic distance? Um, for an, I would say between 0.9 and 0.95, depending on how strong a runner, uh, biker you are. Uh, I think uh, elite bi uh, bicyclists can most likely do closer to your functional threshold power. Um, but I think most age groupers should be shooting for 0.9 to 0.95 for a 40K, for the 40K. Does Stride plan on add triathlon training plans to Power Center? Uh, Jeffrey, I believe uh, it's in the works. Uh, I've heard in the rumor mill that it is in the works. We'll see. Um, as far as other triathlon training plans that you can use that incorporate power, I know there's a lot on the internet out there. Um, and I think today's plan is working on them as well. Um, Matt Fitzgerald, I think, has some. I know I'm working on them. They're, it's down in the docket for me as far as uh, development. So expect them quarter four of this year uh, if I can get to them. But uh, hopefully um, more plans will be coming with using power. Oh, one more note on that, though, is um, – when you're looking at triathlon training plans and kind of doing something similar to this, it's hard because you have, there's so many different factors and variations for, um, for, for that. Uh, because if you buy a generic program offline, it's hard to figure out, well, are you a strong cyclist? Are you a strong runner? Are you a strong swimmer? Um, and it's, it's hard to target your limiters uh, your specific limiters as a triathlete with a generic program. So that's just one disclaimer. All right, any more questions? All right, I think uh, I think we're good. Um, yeah, if you have questions, uh, email us, and uh, so, you know, stay tuned for for the, another webinar next Thursday. We'll have a little bit different topics then, and we'll announce that pretty soon. Um, so, yeah, Chris, thank you again so much for you know sharing your knowledge and um, you know offering up some some advice for us. Oh, oh, we got one more question um, that I'll quickly answer. Is there any uh, IFTSS chart for Olympic distance? Uh, I am not sure about that. Check out Jim Vance's triathlon 2.0. He might have one. Um, but with that, um, thank you very uh, – if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, and thank you to Strive for putting this on. This has been great. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Chris. All right. Happy training.